I even did that. <clears throat> so good evening, everybody. Welcome to the June 5th, 2018 meeting of the Weathersfield. There we go. There Weathersfield <laughs> Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk uh, help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. Here. Chair uh, Vice Chairman Margiotta is not here. Uh, clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes, not here. Mr. Eichel. Here. Mr. Hammer is not here. Mr. Homicki is not here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard, not here. Uh, Mr. Hugh, uh, Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. All right, so we have seven and everybody's participating. We'll move on to item 3.1. This is a public hearing, application number 1983-18Z, Town of Wethersfield. And uh, Derek is going, Derek Gregor, the town engineer, is going to make a presentation. This is for a uh, new salt shed at 100 Marsh Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer. I'm here with Sally Katz, the director of physical services, uh, to present to you a project for replacing our existing salt shed facility uh, at the physical services garage, which is located at 100 Marsh Street. Um, in general, the existing shed that we have is very old. It's an old wooden structure. Uh, it's three-sided. Uh, the material that's inside is exposed to the elements, uh, leads off into freezing and clumping of the material, makes it different, uh, difficult to put into the, uh, the spreaders and the, truck, uh, the trucks for uh, dispersing it on the roadways. So um, because of safety concerns and the fact that it's just an old structure that needs replacement, we've been allocating funds to this for a number of years. Um, what we're looking to replace it with is a steel frame canopy structure um, set on a concrete foundation. So I will uh, walk you through some plans and some uh, details to kind of show you what it is that we're looking at. Um, so what you see on the screen here is an overall view, aerial view of the site, north is to the top. Um, what you see <clears throat> down here in the bottom in this uh, yellow rectangle is the existing wooden salt shed. Um, as I said, it's very old. They, uh, over the years, had to reinforce the back wall of it with telephone poles put in at an angle to keep the, uh, to keep the structure standing. Um, so it's comes a safety concern for personnel that have to work inside it. Um, as I said, it's very old. It's got a lot of holes in it. When it rains, the material gets wet, and that causes a lot of the clumping and uh, issues we have with the salt freezing. What you see here in the blue line is the location of the new salt shed, approximately the same area. It's a larger structure. Uh, we're looking at an 80-foot wide by 90-foot deep structure, um, situated in the same area at the back end of the, of the lot. Um, you may be aware this, is, this whole parcel is in the floodplain. Um, we have thus far gone through HDC, uh, HDC, ZBA, and Inland Wetlands approval. Um, we do have a little bit of fill going on where the structure is, although it will be generally set pretty close to where existing grade is. Um, but we are also doing some excavation work on the site in the area to help offset the loss in floodplain storage. Right now, uh, the facility is operating under an existing DEP uh, stormwater permit uh, for the site. Um, We've met with DEP, we've talked about the fact that we're looking to replace it. They are a proponent of the project. Um, we'll have better control over the salt, uh, less chance for runoff when it rains. Um, the material will all be covered, uh, which I'll show you some details of what the structure will look like. And because we're operating, uh, we're a pre-existing condition having the salt shed here at this location, which is the most ideal place for it in town at our facility. It is in the floodplain. They said operating under the current general permit that we're working under, that we can continue to do that as a pre-existing condition. So until the new permit is issued by DEP, which is anticipated to be possibly next year, they, there would be a requirement for us to move it out of the floodplain, um, which is going to really affect efficiencies. There's not a lot of opportunities for us to install this structure elsewhere in town. Um, so we're really working hard to get this approved and installed this year um, before the snow flies so we can have it in place under the existing permit and have it available uh, for this coming winter. So let me just take you through a few pictures. This is a view looking at the existing shed. Uh, the, two, the open side of it here, as it says, is a three-sided structure uh, faces to the east. Um, as I stated, it's exposed to the elements. When we have deliveries, salt gets dumped on the outside of the structure. Our equipment has to go and push it in. When we do loading, it's all on the outside of the structure. So often um, there's some salt material that is not fully collected here or picked up as we do those operations. When it rains, it does have the opportunity to migrate off-site. Um, we're looking to address that with the new structure and site design. This is a view just looking at the back. I mentioned the telephone poles that are there for structural support. 
uh, to help keep it standing. So this is just a nice metric view of giving you an idea of the structure we're looking at. Um, we're planning to put in a concrete foundation on a spread footing. Um, we're installing the walls of the foundation about 10 feet above grade, uh, which will give us the ability to, to store within the structure about 2,000 tons of salt. Um, on a typical season, 2,000 tons will get us through most of the winter, so we don't have a lot of trucks coming in throughout the season trying to refill and kind of manage our salt stockpiles. Um, what you see here in the top left is we're proposing to put a large opening door in the front of the structure, which is 20 feet wide by 38 feet tall. The reason for that is we want the ability for the trucks that deliver, the largest trucks, to be able to back all the way in and fully extend their dump bed and pull out as they do that. So in doing that, they don't have to dump on the exterior of the structure. They should be able to fully fill the structure by pulling out all the way as they go. So we're looking at an oversized door for that reason. Um, the remaining uh, area would all be enclosed. There'd be a couple of passive vents on the back side of the building we anticipate. Um, we're still evaluating the need for active ventilation or not. Uh, we're still working through the design on this for that, but we're anticipating just be passive vents on the outside. So we're doing some electrical inside, possibly some heating if we feel we need it in the future. But uh, at this point, we're not proposing to put any of those facilities in. It would just be designing to have that um, available to us. Um, currently, we are under uh, design right now. We have a consultant on board that's doing geotechnical analysis of the site. They're going to do soil borings, test pits, um, analysis of the soil. Um, and we have a structural engineer on board who's going to be designing the concrete foundation. Um, the remaining site work is being designed in-house by town staff. This is uh, an elevation view if you were looking um, southward. So this is the north side of the structure. Uh, we are reorienting it so the loading area is to the north and not to the east, which is just easier access for vehicles that both deliver and uh, need to uh, get loaded from the facility. Uh, as you can see here, we've got about that 38 foot by 20 foot wide uh, doorway and the concrete foundations. Um, for structural design, we're looking at uh, an alternative where the steel frames would sit on the outside of the walls on buttresses. Um, that pr protects the steel a little bit better from the, con uh, from the salt. Um, obviously, salt and concrete don't mix, so we're looking at uh, additives that we can put in to help um, offset the effects of the salt, as well as some uh, physical barriers on the inside. Maybe uh, we're looking at some things such as plywood, um, certain wall coverings that might you know, help, help protect it. Um, but the idea was to be able to fill that wall of maybe about 70% and then mound it up inside so we can get the salt we're looking to have available on site at all times. This is just a rear view of the structure, so there's structural supports in the rear walls. But generally, as you can see, it's a, it's a steel frame trusses with a fabric canopy over the top of it. Kind of asymmetric view. This is not exactly what we're looking at, but it's very similar. Um, the only difference I can see here is we, we are looking at providing the ability to install a large garage door like you see, but we're not going to put it in at this time. We're going to kind of see how it works as far as the, the warmth inside the structure, if there's really a need to close it and heat it, or if we'll be fine with an open doorway. Um, a lot of these facilities are open, so we think we'll be okay with that. Um, but so what, the only difference here is we would be extending this doorway. Um, this is, would be larger, so it'd be coming up closer to the roof line. So like we said, we have that ability to fully extend the dump bodies and, and have the trucks pull out of the structure and be able to dump inside. This is just a rear isometric view. You can see a couple of the vents here at the top. We're going to specify six by six passive vents. Um, as I said, if we get in the future put in the door, we'd have the ability to put in fans and louvers to help exhaust the building if needed. Okay, so this is just to uh, give you an idea what the inside of the structure will look like. Um, we are looking at a, at a white fabric canopy. Um, going to HDC, that, that was really their preference. From a light perspective, it does allow a lot of light in, um, which is helpful. Um, but as you can see, we have the internal struss, uh, trusses, and it'll be designed at the certain height so we can get the trucks in there and, and fully dump. And then this is uh, the site plan view <clears throat> that we, uh, we were looking at earlier. Um, just a more of a blown up view. So as you can see here, uh, this gray area here is the existing structure uh, that will be removed by town forces. And what you see in orange or yellow on the screen is what we're looking at for the 80 by 90 foot structure. Um, currently, we, our plan is we're trying to, we're planning to put an 80 by 90 foot structure and that's what we're looking to permit for. 
Um, we have a certain fixed budget on this project, so once we get some more information on the actual requirements for the structural design for the concrete and work out our site costs, we, we, do, we are going to bid it with the ability to be able to put in a smaller structure if needed, but we wanted the permit for the largest structure. Um, if need be, we may trim 10 feet off the width and or the length if we need to to accommodate our budget. Um, but right now we're thinking that we do have enough budget to put this size structure in, and that's what we're um, here tonight for seeking approval. So um, generally, as far as the schedule, um, I had mentioned the fact we're trying to get this installed under the current DE permit, so we're trying to expedite the project um, this summer and get it built this fall. Um, in addition to the fact that the permit, just the safety concerns for personnel, I mean, you can see the structure is very old and it's been uh, structurally supported just to keep it from um, falling down. So we're definitely in need of a structure like this. Um, and basically, a structure like this is essential to the, op uh, to the operations of the town. Um, we need this. We need it available at this facility where it's most efficient. Um, you know, we st these days, it seems like we're getting ice and snow uh, even late October. So we need the ability to, to have it throughout the whole winter season. Um, and, and that's why we're pushing to get it done uh, before the snow flies. Um, generally, as a procedurally, what we try and do is limit the amount of salt that's on site uh, off season. Generally, at the end of the uh, winter season, they try and use up the remaining salt or as much of it as they can, so we're not storing a lot on site. Um, as I said, this is floodplain. So what limited salt might be available uh, or still remaining, particularly spring and fall, when we might have those particular 100-year uh, storm events, if, if it happened, you know, we'd have enough warning that we'd be able to move the, move the salt out. Um, the, the way it's designed, the 10-foot concrete walls would extend up above the floodplain. So if we did have a 100-year flood, the canopy structure and steel itself would be above the floodplain. It would just be at the lower areas of the concrete wall, the pavement that we're planning to install uh, within the structure. Um, as part of this project, as far as site work, I had mentioned we're going to offset floodplain uh, storage. So we are raising the structure uh, not too much, maybe a foot or two to get it up a little bit. And we're going to, on the, uh, I guess, the western side of the structure here, we're going to be excavating an average of three feet down in this area to offset flood storage. This is where we're going to be um, using uh, an area for storing of uh, concrete pipe, concrete tops, some catch basin materials, other, other materials that physical services needs. Um, the area immediately to the north of the structure here, we're looking at doing a full reconstruction with new gravel base and pavement because the pavement's uh, in very, very poor shape that's out there where there is pavement. And if budget allows with the remainder of the site going north out to uh, Marsh Street, if we can, we'd like to mill and overlay the lot as part of the project. Um, that way we'd have the new, we had come to see you last year for the new above ground fuel storage tank that was installed last year, the 12,000 gallon tank. So that is in, um, this is our next big project. So once this is in, we're not anticipating any major projects and it'll be, you know, if we can afford it, we'd like to get it all resurfaced and just have the facility ready to go and uh, usable for years to come. Um, as I mentioned, we had been through some of the other commission approvals. Um, we're planning to bid the site work coming up later this month. Um, we are looking at separate bids, one for the canopy, one for the structural and site work. And the reason for that is really just a uh, cost savings measure. The town can purchase the canopy directly, um, as well as looking at project schedule. It's about a three, three and a half month lead time on getting the structure fabricated and to the site. So to try and move things along, we're gonna have that bid out first, have the bid opening, purchase the canopy, and then have the bid opening for the remainder of the site work. Uh, in addition, that will save us from having to pay a markup on the uh, on the structure. The structure itself is fairly expensive, um, so that way we just pay, buy direct and, and, and reduce the markup. Um, as I said, we're looking to do this work in the fall, probably a six to eight week construction period at this point. Yes. Sure. Uh, I was down there today, and um, in fact, they gave me a review of it, and I appreciate that. Um, well, I happen to, you happen to be there. And um, the um, area you dig out, to the left of it, they're gonna, you know, which is fine. That helps with the floodplain storage issue. Uh, what are you gonna be storing down in there? And a related question to what I'm asking is, there's a lot of junk down in there. You may not call it that. Some of it is useful to you, I know. Mm -hmm. They're all plows or this or that. And I assume you're gonna be cleaning all that up and it'll be to the Flood uh, 91, I guess we could say that, that direction. Uh, and there is a lot in there, and I think you'll want to clean all that out. So would you address those issues? Right, right now, what you're seeing or what you may have seen when you came is a collection of both um, 
items that belong to the board of education and items that belong to us the items that belong to the board of education that are no longer used we are in the process of removing from the site permanently the things that are that are our worst we have especially in this time of the year we have additional basin tops some piping things like that that we keep there that's the street and road work that we do this time of the year yeah but we're exactly the old bus yes there is a bus back there that was used by the fire department for training there were a couple of vehicles back there that we had to leave there they are part of police investigations and the police department does not have the available space at the police department to store those vehicles so we until the investigation and any potential litigation is complete we need to keep those vehicles on site reasonable times that the police require you to do that I mean they're not gonna go on for years they don't some have because of litigation exactly so we will try to consolidate and minimize as we are cleaning the site and we have been trying to do that where we are as I said collecting those items to just try to make it a bit more orderly yeah and that's that that is certainly a goal and we're even purging a little bit more before this project begins thank you yes so where does the loading take place in the future inside or out front potentially in the arm we are gearing for it to happen inside that would be preferable in that by allowing the truck to go all the way in and we load using a payloader the salt is contained within the facility so we're not having any runoff we're not having any salt falling off of the payloader onto you know an exposed area it's it's either from the payloader into the truck or if anything falls out we can sweep it up and bring it back in so it really is contained and not being dragged out um, throughout the site at all by as I said by the payloader or by tires or by any other vehicle it also when we get deliveries they will be able to bring the truck into the facility where now because this the facility is very shallow they have to bring in smaller trucks dump the salt and we are we do spend a lot of time bringing it back into the shed with a payloader the um, the 10 foot retaining wall the 10 foot foundation <clears throat> is not really intended to get it above the flood zone it's to keep you know the material above the salt um, the structure above the salt but it is an, an advantage to keeping your salt dry mm -hmm. do you expect to have a con contingency plan where you can close it off so that if you do have a flood you keep the water from coming into the salt is that possible I think, I think our most likely um, plan for the, in that case would be to take the salt off site ahead of the, the flood I mean generally the floods like that will I mean the site time, um, right, but you know we have records from 1984 there was a hundred-year storm event and it did see water um, since then people that have worked here a long time have said they're not seeing any water on the site um, but it's something we, we'd have to monitor um, I, one thing I didn't mention with regard to saw as Sally said we're, lo we're looking at the ability to load inside um, certainly when it's full we'd have to load what you see out here is the truck uh, where we would load but the way the site's designed and that's what I wanted to mention is we're we're reshaping all this pavement out here so we can create a low point and any salt that is you know, left inadvertently on the outside of the structure will flow down through a swale that's gonna run along the east side and eventually discharge into this small uh, shallow sediment basin we have down here. So the idea with that is right now it just kind of goes everywhere and goes off into the wetland. With this, at least we can contain it. It can go into the said basin, settle out. As it fills up, it overflows into the wetland and that gives town the opportunity to go in there and clean the salt out, clean any other sediment or debris that might be washing through the site. So this was put in as a a wetlands protection erosion control measure to help um, to help keep it on site um, if we do have it outside the structure. So thank you. That takes me to my last question, which is internally, is there a drain that you're putting and where is that drain coming or going to because it would be salt element? Yeah, and there are no uh, structures proposed, catch basins or pipe. So it's, it's all, all over land, it's shallow. So that, all drainage goes toward the door. 
Yes. The, the, well, the drainage towards Inter. the door. Well, we're gonna we're gonna you know create away from the door and create a low point out here towards more towards the center. But that that is all going to discharge to the grass swale. But but fluids from inside the shed, should it flood or if you know yes. anything else happens, it flows toward the front. I think there's a foot. Yes, a we foot do have difference some between the back and yeah, right. So it's all That's going correct. forward. So you're gonna collect it out front. Correct. Thank you. Further question. Have you um, discussed the design with the designers of actually putting the trucks within the tent and the admissions? And the, I know you're not putting the front door on, but if you put the front door on, you may have to look at an active system because mm -hmm. OSHA will yes. come and measure and mm -hmm. shut you down. Yeah, and this is a standard design for these types of facilities. We have spoken to uh, the, the vendors that do deliver um, to talk about different truck sizes and to be able to accommodate the largest truck, which is why we're at the height we're at. Um, uh, <clears throat> but with regard to, yes, we've spoken with them too uh, about that and the fact, that, like you mentioned, if we do get to the place where we end up putting in the door, we are making provisions now in the design to be able to put in that active ventilation system at a later date. Tom? Yes, um, I have uh, just to confirm uh, something in the materials uh, that were presented to us as well as in your oral presentation and I have a question following that. Um, my understanding from the materials is that you we're really in quite a rush to get this accomplished uh, this 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 summer yes. in order that you will be able to uh, construct this uh, new structure uh, ahead of you know potential proposed DEP regulations and that the, you know, the anticipation is that those regulations would you know if they are effective um, you know, before the structure would be uh, completed, would essentially outlaw the structure on, on, the, on this site. So. We have been led to believe that, yes. Okay. Uh, so there is, there is the, you have an urgency to replace this. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to the, the membrane that's going over the top of this, uh, would you kind of describe what that is, what its useful life uh, is anticipated, its propensity to, to damage, that sort of thing? This type of structure with that fabric is used in many towns. The Newington one, they have had for over 25 years, and it has required no maintenance to it. It hasn't ripped, it hasn't buckled. It, um, they clean it every once in a while. They bring a fire truck out and, and clean it off. Um, and so it is, a, it is an application that's used in many towns um, and in this type of size. Um, it does, it's extremely durable and because it is of a light color, it does allow the light in. And so we are not anticipating, and especially because it's going to be up, we're not anticipating ha having to deal with um, any significant issues as they've been proven in other towns when we called around and said what do you what kind of a facility do you use um, everyone who has these said that they liked them even more than a solid wood or other structure because it does allow for light it does allow for airflow to be to be uh, in the facility in your research on this has there been any problems relative to uh, the the load bearing uh, capacity of the of the membrane? No, there have been no collapses or anything like that. So even in a year of, of heavy snows, mm -hmm. snow and ice and so forth, yes. it would still be able to bear the weight of this that may accumulate on yes. it? Yes, and in fact the, the Newington one is out, in the, is out in the open, it's not surrounded by trees or anything else that sometimes um, handles some of the snow or other load, whereas we have, we're we're a little bit more protected than the other town's facilities, which are kind of out in the open and really open to wind and load and ice and, and all those kinds of things. I was gonna say too, as part of the building permit application, um, the, the structure has to be designed to meet state building code for wind loads, uh, snow loads, um, other live and dead loads. So it, is, it does go through that whole process like a typical building would, so they will require a review and permitting through our department, through the building department in town. Okay, and does the manufacturer have an estimated useful life for this? They, 
More than 20 years. Uh, so 25, years. 30 years, yeah. They, they've they seen them as long as, you know, you, you use it, you inspect it, you don't have any type of tornado go through where debris may impact it. Um, we shouldn't have the problems. Thank you very much. Anything else? Richard? You said Newington has one of these? Yes. Is it the same size? Uh, yeah, about that size. It is, it's extremely large. It's large. <laughs> uh, I, I think theirs might be 80 by 70, and ours yeah. is 90 by 80, but it's very close in size. Anybody else around here have one of those? Um, i trying to think of the towns. I don't have it right off the okay. top of my head. But no, I mean, it, it, yeah. it just struck me as very large, yeah. um, you know, and likely to be highly visible from 91 and so forth. And, you know, the way you've described it and what you've shown leads me to believe it's not, you know, the same as one of those sports bubbles like up in East no. Windsor that blew and, you know, ended up getting tangled in all the trees and that sort of thing. It's no. not it's no. not that kind of structure. It's something that, you know, that's more stable. It is more stable. We also went to more of a barn design to it than some of the ones you've mentioned just have kind of like that half barrel yeah. um, design to it. And so this has a, a little bit more of a, of a look to it when we were talking with aesthetic. A, aesthetic, yes, when we were talking with HDC about it. And unfortunately, the current structure that we have really is an eyesore. Mm -hmm. um, and as Derek was mentioning, it is unsafe. I mean, the, this structure has been shored up every way that's possible. It, it hasn't even, fallen on any town employees? No, to knock on wood, it has not um, to it's date. Bad. Yeah. It, it, but you, yeah. yes, sir, you saw it yourself. It does sound <laughs> like it, it would be, you know, if you had an ocean inspector come there now, uh, the town would be in trouble. Well, no, I mean, we, that, we did have a meeting with DEP and explained to them what we wanted to do what we currently have, what our plan was, and they were certainly in the positive saying, yes, that is a very good suggestion that you want to move on replacing this. Of course, while well, this is important, the environmental aspect of it, but the larger the facility, economically, would it benefit us as far as purchasing salt, being greater, be able to take advantage of pricing? Uh, well, our pricing, we do bid out our pricing. We use, uh, we do our own bids. We don't use the state bid, and we always use two vendors, so we always have salt available. Um, we don't want to retain too much salt um, at the facility. We really try to balance what we need and not having too much because we don't want it sitting there. It does have the potential to clump, and so we, we really do play that game of, how much do we get, how much do we use, and we really don't want to have a lot left over at the end of a season. And we have found historically that the 2,000 tons gets us through a good part of the season. snow season, even if the snow season begins um, at, say, the end of October. We can pretty much go through almost February with it. Um, the year that we had 11 inches of snow every Sunday night, for, for nine weeks, um, we did need to use more, but again, we didn't want to get too much because we don't want it sitting there. Derek, uh, would you explain a little further the ability to finance this? Uh, you said you're even thinking of designs that might be smaller in case you don't have it, yeah. but you've been setting money aside in the capital yes. budget, but I. I haven't seen it in the capital budget, but I may not have looked on it or it's disguised in some other terminology. For the past six years, we've been putting money away in our capital improvements project. If you look at the town budget under capital improvements, each year there's been a line item for salt shed. And that is where we've I've gone every year since I've been here to request funding, knowing that um, these types of issues are quite expensive and therefore we wanted to build it up over time. And, and so you did that over how long? Six, six years. years. Six years. So yes. you do have a reasonable amount set aside. Yes. And you think it's getting close to the value of what this might be? Yes. Okay. Okay. And you might, 
I hope you won't have to cut back on the size of it because it sounds like you've planned for the size. Yeah, really. yeah that, you know, there's, there's other areas we could cut as far as the milling and overlay I talked about and things like that if we need to. So I, I don't anticipate that. I'm just saying that's there as a contingency um, because of the fact that we're going to be bidding the canopy separately while we're working on finishing up the design. But it's just there as a fallback in case we needed it. So I, I will note that the file has uh, a letter from Derek uh, describing the project. Probably says exactly what his verbal presentation was. Peter also provided a document uh, describing specifically uh, that they have their approvals from the Historic Commission, the Wetlands, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. No particular um, criteria that you saw necessary to put on this? No, it's been, as, as the record indicates, it's been reviewed by pretty much every agency we have in town. So they've had to visit uh, a number of uh, boards and commissions. So all of those uh, agencies have had a chance to review it. So I think the plan is uh, pretty comprehensive at this point. Thank you. So this is a public hearing. Is there anybody from the public that would wish to speak on this proposal? Seeing none, are there last questions by the commission? If not, close. thank you very much. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? All right. So, uh, anybody like to make a motion? Make a motion, <coughs> to Mr. Chairman, to approve uh, application number 1983-18-Z. And um, I don't know of any conditions we need to add. As, as submitted, yep. Seems pretty clear cut, present, good presentation, clear cut. So I'll okay. second the motion. All right, Tom, thank you. Anything, Peter, you think going to No, be as I stated, it's it's been around the block. Um, we did a, a early review on it, so and worked with <coughs> worked with the engineering department on some odds and ends which have already been incorporated. Okay. Good, thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Passes unanimously. Good luck. Go get it built. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, item 3.2, a public hearing, application number 1984-18-C, Tom Kurtz, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 uh, for the change of use from a salon to an office use. <laughs> Bill Simmons, HVAC, wholesaler at 161 Main Street. <laughs> so welcome, if you would uh, identify yourself for the record. And then give us a presentation, if you would. All right. Well, hello all. My name is Tom Kurtz. I'm here from the Bell Simons Companies. We are heating and HV, sorry, heating, air conditioning wholesalers. We have storefronts throughout New England and New York, and we're hoping to relocate our corporate office to Old Weathershield. Uh, doing so would bring 13 full-time employees to the proposed building. Um, most of them would work between 8 and 4.30, Monday to Friday. And we would function as a typical office, um, minimal noise, hardly any traffic aside from the morning commute. And in the office we'll be covering accounting, IT, human resources, and legal. That's pretty much all there is to it. All right, so, so thank you. Uh, there is a uh, letter, a memo to the file from Peter to us indicating several items. He proposes the history of the, the site, et cetera, but in particular he notices or gives us notice of a refuse storage and suggesting that it should be enclosed um, and reviewed and approved by the Historic Commission. The, some signage, some issues with lighting, and uh, most importantly, the parking needs to be striped. Have you seen this memo? I have, and we have uh, no problem doing any of that. All right. Other questions from commission members? Go ahead. Yeah, I uh, went in there. Sonny, I don't know how much this has to do with exactly with the part of the site where the tank is going for the removal and the new installation. 
Uh, but to the south, and I don't know if you can answer this, uh, there's a lot of brush George there and the, uh, chipping. George, uh, what? George, wrong application. Wrong application. This is the application oh, Old Wethersfield. I apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. You had me a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Never hold, mind. Hold that. <laughs> hold that. Hold that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Somebody else All has right. a heads up on a question coming, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other questions for this applicant? Yeah. Uh, yes, um, are you being looked at? I mean, someone's going to pick up it. What ADA compliance for the bathrooms and ramps and yeah, we're gonna have that all done. We're still um, and we haven't purchased the property yet. We're doing the due diligence, but after all that's done, we'll be going okay. through every appropriate channel. Okay. Yolanda, thank you. Um, just a couple questions for you. So you're located in Hartford right now. Currently, yes. Your corporate office is located in Hartford? Yes. And is it the same amount of employees and is the same type of structure, so to speak? The same um, amount of people? And, it's and the same amount of people. And the IT and, and, and the... Yes, it's the same. All the employees are moving over. Uh, okay. Where we were in Hartford used to be one of our storefronts, but it's not anymore. So we have thousands of wasted square feet, so we're looking to reduce that. Okay, so you're finding that this type of building is more conducive for the number of employees that you have? Absolutely. Okay. Because there also was a discrepancy in parking spaces. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's some of the concerns you have also. Um, it seemed that you were indicating that you had 16 spaces on the site and, and um, there may be a difference 14 spaces and not 16. Uh, yeah, the building was advertised as 16 spaces. Uh, we get we didn't notice um, going over the plans, but we only have 13 full-time employees. Uh, we maybe have a lawyer visit quarterly, um, an insurance agent visit quarterly, and uh, a gentleman who works on our forms for our invoices who comes maybe once a month. So parking doesn't seem to be an issue. That's all I have. Thank you, George. Yeah, the, uh, how, how do you get to the second floor if you're handicapped? That's so, I th so I think he answered that, that as he, as he buys, he's doing due diligence on the building, right? And he hasn't bought it yet, but when they uh, fix it, they're gonna have to make it ADA compliant, right? And that probably re requires you to- that? You gonna put an elevator or something in? Uh, we'd explore all the options. It's it's there's a caveat in the building code that allows um, as long as services uh, are offered on the main handicapped accessible floor, they don't necessarily have to be provided on the upper floors. So there are provisions in the building code um, that would allow. That so uh, that obviously will be reviewed by the building department, but I think given the nature of the business, um, given the fact that um, very few walk-ins off the street, um, unlike what happens today as a hair salon, um, that probably will not not be a problem. Um, thank you, Peter. Uh, the uh, walkway. I'm familiar with it. My wife went there for many, many years. And uh, I went in there the other day, and it, uh, there were boards up on the walkway, lifting, and uh, splinters. It's not well kept. Uh, is there going to be any improvements on the building or even the apron on the driveway out to Garden Street? Uh, didn't look too good there. Um, the. Uh, what about the, Peter, the uh, previous requirement that the dumpster be enclosed and uh, the dumpster is sitting out there not enclosed? Yeah, as my memo indicates, I'd, I'd suggest you have conditions. Uh, the building department um, will obviously, as part of their review, take a look at the handicapped ramp, take a look at other conditions inside the building that may require uh, improvement. So um, the ramp when it was built was built to, to the code at that time not 1790 no mm -hmm. no when but was it? It was something. 
think it was 88, I think, so or 89. Um, 17. Yeah, not, not 17, <laughs> uh, 89. So um, it wasn't that long ago, but, but it, it was. But anyway, uh, they're going to go through that. They're going to have to I, go. I'm only hitting some of the things that are obvious to my eyesight, not structurally. Correct. I mentioned to the applicant today, and he hasn't. they haven't gone that far yet, as he mentioned, where they are in the process. They're going to have to go through all of the interior conditions and improvements with the building department. They're going to have to look at, they're going to look at bathrooms, they're going to look at the ramp, they're going to look at other things in the building. Um, there's, I think you're going to be redoing the roof. I think that was mentioned. Yes, um, we need a new roof. We're planning on at least painting the building and anything else we need to take care yeah. of, we're prepared to. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Mr. Chairman. My part, I think. Tom, did you have a question? Uh, no, just uh, a bit of comment with regards to, since I, the issues that George brought up, uh, in that, that relative to ADA compliance, there are uh, both exemptions and also reduced requirements for uh, buildings that are you know, his historic mm -hmm. in nature, as well as uh, in the event that trying to make an existing building accommodate the ADA requirements if it reaches a certain percentage, then the, the state building official can you know, waive requirements. So. Um, but but otherwise, you know, any improvements, anything that that's done to the building are definitely going to need to comply with the uh, uh, you know state building code, like safety code, electrical code, you know, and several other you know different uh, regulatory code requirements that that would apply. And I I would presume those are going to be uh, acted upon and, and enforced by our local building officials our, and fire marshal. All right. Thank you. So, so George? Or Rich. How many parking spaces are required by our regulations for this? I mean, it said they have 13 employees and ballpark 14 spaces. They received a variance in 97 um, for the parking. So... Um, I think that was for a different use. Though. Yeah, uh, so that was a service use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They could probably, fit, you know, probably get up to sixteen spaces um, there. As it's laid out, it's not that many, but um, given the conditions out there, I'm sure if they were creative, they could. Uh, they could do that, so um, I would encourage um, some of that to be discussed in your conditions of approval. Yeah, yeah but I guess my question is sort of a different one, which is how many are required? Because oh, um, one of the yep. few sites that actually has a fair amount some of room. Yep. on site parking, yep. and before we start getting agitated about yep. you know, what happens if they hire another employee, you know, to figure out that. You know, basically, they, they only need to have 10 under the regulations, then maybe we can head off some agita. Quick calculation if you want to talk about other okay. things while I'm doing that. Okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that comment and then you can get back to it, Rich. Sure. Yeah, that's good, George. Uh, um, just my suggestion to you as a user of this facility, and probably you know, more than a user, you're putting some money into it, I would think. Um, the only access for older people, and I don't know how many of your employees are what, what ages, but even for handicapped, it's getting up and down those front steps is difficult. Now the ramp is there. That better be a good ramp, as far as I'm concerned. And I would suggest you make sure that that is the case. Okay? Mm -hmm. well, no matter what the building officials may or may not say. Okay. So this is a public hearing. So uh, while Peter is doing his math, is there anybody from the public? Tom? And if you would yield the microphone, Mr. Kurtz, uh, appreciate it. May I ask that the commissioners use their microphones too, because sometimes they stay so far away. We don't sure, thank you. Hey, Buzz, uh, did you hear me? Yes. I, I'm asking a serious <laughs> question of you. 
You want to know why? <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to no, know why? No, George. No, George. No, no. Town manager keeps George. saying to me, get closer to the mic, George. And I think my voice is pretty loud. So. I'm asking you. Okay. Hey. Tom? <clears throat> Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. Um, so the applicant expressed that this is going to be a corporate office. Is there going to be a restriction so that they won't have clients coming in? I know they had a storefront in Hartford, but it's the type of business where customers would maybe in the future decide to come in, and if so, is the, is the permit going to be restricted to just corporate only? Um, fair enough. We'll, we'll ask him if, if that's your only comment. Right. I, think, I think generally speaking, we wouldn't make such a restriction on any office um, use. I suspect that if it became a retail use where there was more foot traffic, more people coming in, there would probably be a change of use rather than strictly office. Right? So my first reaction is probably not. Peter, have you had an opportunity to do your math? Yeah, the qu uh, quick math, uh, it, roughly 4,600 square feet, four spaces per thousand. If you do the fractional measurements, it's 19 spaces. Okay. Yep. All right. So, so to the extent 19 is quote unquote required for this use, um, there is street parking. We don't want to make it any worse than it is, but if you were to do parking on site, you, we would prefer that you maximize what's available, I think, is what it boils down to. So if you can get 16, try and squeeze it in. That'll be better. Yeah, that's what we want to do, yeah. Okay. Anything you want to push, push that issue or discuss that issue further, Rick? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Yes, I, I'm, I'm sorry, yes. Thank you. Lost control. Okay, having said what I said, I'll try and do this right. <laughs> um, I would just like to remind the commission and the prospect that um, this is a village business zone, and by and large, most of those places in that zone have people living there, families living there, some with children, some without. Uh, my kids went all the way through the Weathersfield school system, and one of them is the chief cook and bottle washer for a Fortune 200 company now. Anyway, um, I'm concerned. Uh, I live one house away. There's their building, there's Center Street, there's Charlie Ford's place, and then there's my home. And um, I, too, have business in my barn. And um, uh, I don't know that we've ever had a noise complaint there. But I am, uh, I'd like a little more um, fleshing out of what's going to be there um, if, it's, if it's strictly an office building. Um, I certainly have no problem with that, where people come to work in the morning and, and go home at night. Um, are you going to be um, having trucks loading and unloading in there? No. Okay, good. We can scratch off that one. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm very aware of that donut shop on the Berlin Turnpike that the neighbors finally complained so many times about the noise that they finally had to leave. And I don't want them to walk into something like that. But if it is really an office building where you come to work in the morning and, and uh, uh, these things, the building department can help you with the things that they've mentioned. But um, uh, I, my, uh, uh, actually all of my neighbors had kids that, excuse me, had kids that went to, through our school system, and uh, they're all successful now, I'm glad to say. Um, but um, I just don't want, I want the neighborhood to stay village business. Mm -hmm. I want people to be able to live there and be proud of where they live. It is in the historic district. 
It's a very important part of the historic district. Um, most of the structures there were built in the uh, 18, uh, 17 and 1800s. Um, I don't happen to know when your building was built, but I know it was built as a, as a uh, uh, market. And um, so uh, my, my, the house that I live in was my grandmother's house. So, uh, and I'm planning to leave it to my daughter, but I don't want to leave it to my daughter and find out that it was a curse rather than uh, something uh, that I intended it to be. Um, so um, it is, I, I haven't heard anything mentioned that I'm concerned about mostly noise as far as the uh, uh, generators concerned i don't blame him for that i wish i had one whenever the power goes out um, and usually when someone's is going everyone's is going um, but um, uh, i just want to see the neighborhood stay pretty much as it is and um, i don't know if any of you saw uh, the uh, Antiques magazine that came out this month featuring Old Weathersfield and how much we guarded our present existing um, uh, old, old houses. And uh, so um, I would like to uh, think that if it's going to be strictly an office building, uh, I don't have any problem with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, George? Yeah. Worthy. Another question. Um, the owners, are they? George, here? Oh, microphone. They <laughs> um, I'm, uh, we're a family business. I'm one of the owners. Uh, I'm the you only one, one here. Okay. Yes. Uh, question, what's happening to Blades? They, they're a tenant now, of course. Um, they're contracted uh, or under lease until August, and I'm really not sure what's happening to them after this. Okay. What? Oh, no, I, I'm curious. My wife spent a lot of time in that place, and I did too. Sorry. I guess I guess to follow up on Buzz's kind of comment question. I mean, this is going to be an office use. It'll be, you know, you indicated somebody might stay late, somebody might come in early, but it's generally people. Coming to work, they may walk or carpool to lunch, or somebody will bring lunch in. When they're done working, they'll leave, and that there won't be, you know, after hours activities or, you know, large throngs of people coming and going throughout the course of the day. Um, I mean, is that is that kind of accurate? Yeah, that's all correct. Uh, for the past ten years, any sort of managers meetings we've held have been in Massachusetts never done them or in the past 10 years we stopped doing them in Hartford we're not intending to do them here um, given the nature of the business heating and air conditioning the place would be far too small to store anything we're right. going to be using it up with you know all our desks and everything so we're not, not going to have any trucks or anything like that it's strictly an office okay so I mean it you know just kind of on the face of it it strikes me that it's going to be a less intrusive and noticeable use than what's there now as far as you know, impacts on the residents and the neighborhood and so forth. Thank you. Anybody else in the public that wants to uh, make a comment? All right. Other questions from the commission? If not, uh, move to close hearing. Second. Tom, you're on the on top of it tonight. Both of them. <laughs> Double parked. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. <clears throat> Make a motion. motion we approve application 1984-18-Z with um, four one? stipulations. One, uh, that the dumpster shall be enclosed, enclosure shall be reviewed, reviewed and approved by the HDC and the zoning officer prior to issuance of building permit. Um, two, that if there is a uh, change in the sign that all appropriate approvals be required. Uh, three, any proposed lighting must be full cutoff fixtures. Four, the lot shall be striped to accommodate at least 14 parking spaces, and including one handicap space, and more if you can do it appropriately. 
Peter, anything on structural or the handicapped, or will that all be brought out by our building official? That'll, that'll be reviewed by the building official um, as, as part of that um, process. So I, if you wanted to you know, throw in something about the handicap ramp since it's an exterior uh, improvement that the, that it be. I'd like that. Yeah, I, I don't mind. see why you couldn't, uh, you know, specifically request that the existing conditions of the handicap ramp uh, be reviewed and uh, upgraded as, you know, determined by the building official. And right. the, the driveway apron, to throw that in. It's okay. pretty serious there. Yeah, right at Garden Street. But it doesn't go to Garden I, Street. I think it's not the town's. It's just Center Street. Street. It's it's just Center Street, yep. Yeah. All right, I'll add those two. Nobody has seconded it yet. I'll second. Very active. All right. Any discussion on that? Six, six conditions? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, excellent. Good luck. Good luck. Welcome to town. Thank welcome you. Welcome to town. Yeah, welcome is right. Moving on, um, on to item 3.3, application number 1986-18Z, City of Hartford, Department of Public Works, seeking site plan and design review in accordance with section 3.64, the installation of an above ground thousand gallon convolved tank, replacing an underground, I think it's underground, diesel fuel tank. Welcome. Good evening, uh, Frank Delarippa, city engineer for the city of Hartford. Um, shortly after I arrived at the city about a year ago, uh, Deep slapped four red tags on me for uh, four different uh, underground fuel tanks throughout the city. Two of them happened to be at Goody Park. Um, the maintenance facility right off of Ridge Road is in Wethersfield. I think the tennis court's in Wethersfield as well. Anyways, the two tanks, uh, one 500, the other one 500, one holds diesel, one holds gasoline, uh, need to be replaced. And uh, tonight we want to present to you our plan to uh, install an above ground 1,000 gallon tank with a wall in between that has 500 diesel on one side, 500 gasoline on the other. So uh, Darren from Freeman Companies is going to present the details. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Darren Lemire. I'm a professional engineer from uh, Freeman Associates. Um, like Frank says, uh, there's two 1,500-gallon. There's uh, existing two 500-gallon tanks, one 500-gallon uh, diesel, one 500-gallon gasoline tank. It's uh, near the front of the, the property. Yeah, near Ridge Road. And uh, the plan is to uh, replace both of those underground tanks with above ground one tank, a 1,000 gallon, which with a divider in the center, a convolve tank, which is a, a steel tank that's have a 30 mil uh, liner and then an overcoat of uh, concrete. Um, it's uh, very common with uh, you know, public works facilities and uh, a lot of towns in uh, um, Connecticut use it. So the, the tank would be, uh, we're gonna put that in the back of the property um, a lot farther away from Ridge Road um, across from the maintenance facility on the east side. Um, the tank, it's uh, only four and, a half, uh, four and a half feet high. It's uh, 11 feet long, six feet wide. So footprint, it's 66 feet. Um, the tank will be protected by bollards. Um, we'll have uh, permanent uh, seven foot high chain link fencing around it with uh, slide gates. And uh, it's going to be used for uh, golf carts, uh, fueling, and for the um, equipment at the maintenance uh, facility. <clears throat> uh, 
And just in terms of the quick construction sequences, uh, we would uh, install the, the install the tank. Um, there's, right now the building has sufficient, uh, power, um, so it's, it's pretty much, um, you know, the same type of system, uh, so we're not drawing any new power. It already has a tank alarm system that will be upgraded, so there'll be minimal uh, amount of work on that with respect to that, and, uh, there, just in terms of uh, where it's located, it's right off the pavement. But there is a little bit of a, a grade down. Um, there's some trees in that area. Um, we would coordinate with, the uh, city's gonna coordinate with uh, the town forester. Um, and I think that coordination is going on right now. So, um, and I believe the city's gonna um, possibly do some of that work prior to um, the tank being, tank work being completed. But not too many trees gone, right? Don't know how many. Yeah. Since he's still discussing it with us. We, we actually met with the tree warden um, and they didn't have any problems. They're pines, not, not nice oaks or anything like that. And then just uh, switch over to the road to the set of the control plan that we prepared. So we kind of, you know, the, there's two areas where we're basically putting the erosion sediment control, like this first area where up here, where we, we do have to. Uh, we're pushing the grade out a little bit, and then we're going to come down on a two to one slope. So there's some a little bit of earthwork there, and we'll we'll put an erosion uh, hay bales, and then we'll have a double row silt fence. The double row seems to work. Uh, what we find works a lot better because you always that first row is always you know it gets hammered, but at least you have the second row there, um, and then we'll have uh, hay bales and uh, silt fence around the 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 area where they're going to be removing the small tanks. And I think that's that's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Dan. George? Yeah. Um, I even mentioned it to town staff, but um, just to the south of this, it's not directly where the tanks are going in. There's a lot of brush on that site. And I don't know if the town has gotten permission in Hartford for that. Now, I know there's been a lot of trees down and so forth everywhere. And, but I'd rather not have that area full of, are you going to be doing something about that? And there's also a chipping area down on the lower part of this that's being used as a chip dump. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, I'm, I mean. I'm not the the parks guy, but what I do know is we're in we're going to be uh, building a facility off of Jennings Road where all of that trees and brush is going to be chipped down there, as opposed to so, so at, a like a Keeney Park and Colt Park. Right. So at least the brush that's there, and there isn't it's a good sized few good sized mounds of it. I think I didn't inspect it thoroughly, but uh, you know that's going to be leaving and going. Elsewhere. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. I, I'd rather keep Weathersfield's area on the park, you know, looking reasonable. And the chipping down there, I don't know how much there is, but there was some. So, anyway, those are my comments. Whether we put it in a condition, I don't know. Yes, sir. Dan? The installation and maintenance of tanks is in the news because of Newington, the problems they had in Newington. And maybe you can review to us the controls you expect to have to prevent the type of disaster uh, that uh, or maintenance that happened in Newington. Yeah, Newington's tank was on the ground, correct? Uh, it was an underground yeah. tank. Is that, and that, so yeah. like my, my thing, I worked many years for the NDC and did a lot of this work, and I come to the city and I didn't do any of it. 
So we have this push now, whenever I can find some money, to remove tanks throughout the city. So this particular convault system is above ground and uh, it's an excellent, excellent system. It, it, there, I don't have to report anything to DEEP as far as um, you know, uh, uh, reporting about uh, spill, um, not spilling, what do they call it? Uh, with the conditions. Monitoring. Monitoring, yeah, yes. Right. I don't have to do that with this tank. Um, it's just because it's above ground and it's, it's got <laughs> self-containment. So I will never have a Newington. I, I would never let that happen. These are great tanks. And I'm going to be doing this in many places in the city. I don't know if that answers, yeah, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can't, I don't want to get into the details, but you just can't neglect things like this. These were, the reason why we're doing this is because they're well over, they're 30 years old? Right, yeah. Well, and years. somebody before me should have known that, so. I assume that part of the removal of the underground tank would include uh, requisite pet testing for soil and the farm, the farm marshal from Wethersfield has to witness it. And uh, if we have contaminated soil that spreads out, I shouldn't say contaminated, it's called polluted when it's fuel oil, then we have to we get rid of it in the, with the blessing of the farm marshal from Wethersfield. Tom? Oh, did you have yes, a Yes, I did have a couple of questions. Um, the two existing tanks now are, are basically 50-50 split between diesel and gasoline. That, that They're individual uh, tanks. Yes, I understand. You one, <laughs> one containing gasoline, one containing diesel, per the understanding I uh, received from the material submitted in the presentation. That's correct. What is the fuel that's going into the one tank that will replace these two tanks? There, there's a divider in the, in the convault tank, a steel divider, so gasoline on one side, and diesel on the other, both 500 gallons. Instead of buying two tanks, I could buy one with this steel. Yes, basically two, two and one, a right. twofer. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, now you alluded in your presentation to some of the arrangements that sound like sec you know security things such as the fence. Uh, I think you also uh, alluded to uh, some kind of uh, existing alarm system or something of that nature. Could you, but could you detail the arrangements that you have in you know, this proposal for uh, security, particularly security against vandalism? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, it has a remote uh, TLC system, which is a tank m monitoring system, but also there's uh, shutoffs inside the maintenance facility, so they, actually shut down the pumps when they're not there. Um, so, you know, on nights or weekends, it's kind of a redundant system by uh, doing that. You know, in case some, you know, you can always, I guess you can always, you know, get through a fence or something like that, but um, that's, so that's a redundant system. The vandalism is a, a big concern in Hartford, believe me. Yes, I'm aware of that. Which works for New Haven. So the, so the so the fence is, it's the it's it's the right re, uh, height for right the, for it, yeah seven feet high, um, chain link, and uh, like you said we're shutting off the pumps inside, so um, you know that's that's you know the the security that we have for the system. There's no there's no uh, allowance then for things like uh, you know. Motion sensors, uh, you know, on the intrusion tank type or, thing, or or camp, you know, cameras uh, uh, um, to record, uh, you know, the, the area. Uh, we we are putting things. cameras in many of our parks. That could that um, there may be one there already. I don't know because I'm, I'm not sure about that particular area. There there there, there probably is. I'd have to look into that. From my perspective, you know, security is, is probably the, the the major concern I have with respect to your proposed installation. Understood. Yeah, the the existing system has a fence around it, and and gas gas pumps and diesel pumps like you would find at your ga local gas station, and it's closer to Ridge Road. Uh, I don't know. There might be a camera there now. I'd have to check. Uh, 
urge you to take you know sure. those no, matters into point. consideration. Rich, did you? Yeah, I, I was just going to ask whether you received the memo from Derek and the one from the fire marshal, both dated yesterday, that had a number of comments on it, and whether you had any issues with those, so if you had seen yeah. it. It's possible you didn't. They're dated yesterday. <coughs> yeah, we, we saw the, the fire marshals. Uh, we didn't see Derek's. We yeah. didn't see Derek's. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the fire marshal seems straightforward, and it yes. seems to be exactly okay. what you said, right? Yes. So that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Derek. Send it to Reg Reginald Free, kind of? He's, okay. the, he's my boss, the okay. DPW okay. director. He didn't have your name on there. That's probably why you didn't see it. Um, it okay. Just to kind of summarize as you're doing it. Yes. Three, three and four are probably straightforward enough. Um, number one is suggesting some sort of uh, spill containment uh, protection by dealing with a catch basin. Uh, not being personally familiar, I'm not really sure. That's yeah. Um, I mean, I our plan did, I mean, uh, just to kind of speak to kind of stormwater, um, that the plant basically is, in terms of grading, uh, it grades towards um, this way, and then kind of hits the curb here, and then it flips. Um, right, that led us, oh yeah, the flow is deep. Along the concrete, hits the curb, and then flows along this way, and then over here, it just goes down that way. There's a catch basin here, there's this one shown. So our location, much equal distance between the catch basins. We didn't, we kind of, you know, had that in mind when we were citing it. Um, and then also the concrete pad here drains 2% back to the west towards, towards the pavement. So basically it's kind of trying to keep everything on the pavement and the, the farthest distance from catch basins. So if in any, you know, in any uh, case, if there happened to be a spill or a release or something, it, it could be, uh, you know, uh, the most time, uh, you know, to, to uh, take care of that. So I'd hate, I'd hate to design it, you guys to design it in front of us. Um, <laughs> that's not going to work well. Uh, personally, I think uh, some comment along the lines of working out with staff mm -hmm. would seem appropriate, right? Understood. Mr. Chairman, did did they say they the could moment. agree with oh, I'm sorry. the comments? So, so I'm sorry. Let me let me just finish on the thought. I guess there are far more comments from Derek. I apologize. I thought there were only the four. So, so before we go on to another topic, let's just finish this. Let's see. Erosion control. You you were dealing with that, and and covering the catch basin during construction. You were talked about that. So I'm sure again the coordinate with staff would cover all that. Um, Hay bales, cover sheet. Every, everything here seems yeah. straightforward yeah, enough. Yeah, I think it's pretty okay. straightforward. Okay. We can work this out. Okay. Well, when are you uh, going to start okay. and finish one of the items on the engineers? Um, Any idea or general? As soon as we get Sorry. approvals, um, it's pretty much designed. We want to go out to bid. Okay. So we would like to get this thing in. Just so you guys all know, the, the, there's a golf management company running Goodwin and running Keeney, managing, I should say, the two, and they got to bring fuel in, not in a pickup truck, to get the golf carts filled right now. I can't use, I can't use the existing tanks. The deep won't let me. They red tagged them. Well, you got to do it quick. So, uh, yeah, I got to get this going. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, um, why did they red tag the tanks? The state regulations, uh, after so many years, mm -hmm. if you don't show um, uh, testing results or the tank, I think after 30 years, basically everybody has to get rid of their yeah, around tanks. So, right? mm -hmm. You might be able to get an extension, but mm -hmm. that was way too late for us. So when you're re so then you have to remove these tanks, right? Out of the ground. Out of the ground because it's underground right now. You're going to remove the tanks and. Test the, the soil conditions. Correct. 
per st state um, regulations, yep, and the fire marshal oversees that. Yep. And you remove that, remove the hazardous, uh, hazardous or polluted, like you said, and then just replace it. With, Fill the hole with, with good clean, dirt. With clean dirt. Clean. That's it. They haul it away and replace it. All right, so this is a public hearing. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to comment on this? Seeing nobody. Final questions? You're all set? Final questions of the applicant? If not, entertain a motion. Tom, Tom, we need you, Tom. Tom, we need you. It's not a hearing. Oh, it's not a hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. No? I'll make a motion to approve 1986-18-Z. Um, subject to satisfaction of the 13 items in Derek Gregor's memo of June 4th and acknowledgement of the three items in Anthony Dignati's memo of June 4th. Is there anything else? Second. Anything else? No. All right. All those in, who got a second? George? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Any comment, question? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Go dig them up, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. All righty. Item 3.4, Whippoorwill Estates Subdivision, bond reduction request. Is the applicant here? Hi. Oh, you have to make a speech. You have to make a speech. You sell Whipper Will Estates, 101 Hammer and Old Road, Rocky Hill. We're asking for a reduction of our bond because 90% of the work is done. I'd like to finish it all, but uh, we've had a couple discussions on that. So. All righty. So, Peter, would you like to carry the town's water on this? Sure, you do, you do have a couple of memos on this. So, initially, there was a uh, request back on May 2nd uh, in a, in a uh, correspondence from Close Jensen and Miller, Kevin Johnson. Um, just providing you with um, yeah, the request uh, for the bond reduction, um, you know, the, in, indicating what they've done so far. They're working uh, or ultimately will be submitting an as-built. Uh, at that point, uh, the town engineer uh, prepared uh, the attached memo, which is then dated June 1st with a recommended amount based on their inspection. Uh, so they are recommending per that June 1st memo the bond amount um, be reduced to $38,361.40. I'm not sure how they came up with the 40 cents, but in any event, in accordance with the mark. So there is an attached breakdown uh, of those numbers uh, in terms of what's been completed and what uh, has not been completed. Obviously, the, the most significant of the items that has not been completed to there uh, at this point is the two inches of bituminous concrete, the final surface course as well as some cleaning and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that is the number that he is recommending. And then as of today, and I, I don't know if Paul got a copy of this, but there's a, a, a another memo dated uh, today regarding Japanese knotweed and a recommendation uh, that as part of this bond reduction that uh, it be uh, recommended that uh, some of the conditions out there regarding Japanese not we'd be uh, taken care of so uh, and work that out with uh, with the town engineer yeah that's fine we have, we have discussed that already so that we're all set okay okay good question I walk by there almost every day I've never noticed it what does that look that weed is it I got to how do I explain it to you it's uh, about this high it's broad leaf it's kind of red looking where is it growing? Mostly on town property. <laughs> well, exactly, <laughs> exactly where? Which lot? Then? It's uh, if you go down Old Reservoir Road, you know where the mound is, where the yeah. trees are up on top. You'll yeah. see it right up along the curb there, which is the town property, and then it migrated right across the street to our lot. So we're taking care of our lot, and the town's taking care of yeah, their property. Care. I never noticed it. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. Until I was told that that's what it was. I just thought it was weeds. Whatever. Alrighty. It spreads quickly, so if you don't. Oh, no, I understand from reading it. Yep. All right. Uh, so, obviously, it's put forth by Derek, so he, he approves it. Um, we just need a motion to... Motion to approve. <sighs> Is there a number on this? Bond reduction to $38,361.40. Sure. Sure. 
We, we might round that 40 cents. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to talk to Derek we'll to about being Derek able to round numbers. Cents, yeah. Should have at least gotten 40 cents 50 cents. <laughs> 50 cents at least. The 40 cents is a contingency. How many seconds she would like, please? Somebody. I'll second. Thanks, John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Good. Thank you. And strangely, you are the third Paul Ucello that I've met in two weeks. Third? I am absolutely <laughs> serious. I was expecting to see one of the two that I'd already met before me really? today, and you were a third face. Well, I know there was one who used to be the mayor of Newington. I don't know where he is anymore. It would probably, it's somebody from this area, in the East Hartford maybe area, and then there's another one in, in Saybrook. I never realized that my name was that common. Um, even going through <laughs> <laughs> grammar school in Hartford and wherever, and then all of a sudden, it's like, are you related to this one? Are you related to that one? We're all over the place, and none of us are related, which I find kind of odd, but <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> right, thank you. All right, so uh, other business? Anything special before we move on to the minutes? I, uh, no. Make a motion the minutes be approved. Do you like them? You read them? You're, you're good with them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, We're I might on find you. A, an A and or an A-N or something like that. But, but you uh, did they They're correct, perfect? As far as I'm concerned. Nice. No well, second it then. Thank you. Uh, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And, and there's going to be plenty here to, uh, to approve that. All right. Excellent. So, are we done? I so gave just uh, just I, I gave you a copy of the uh, report that I provided to the town council last night in terms of projects that are going on uh, in town. You may not have had a chance to uh, take a look at that, but that um, there's about 35 projects in various uh, states, um, and based on your actions tonight, one of them that's being reviewed is now approved, but not yet under construction. So. Um, just uh, in case anyone has any questions about what's going on in town, this uh, should give you a, a good summary of uh, where, where things are at in the, in the pipeline. So you're going to bring the new uh, zoning enforcement officer in so we can meet him or introduce him? Yes, I did manner? talk to him. Probably, uh, I think your next agenda should be pretty light. So maybe I'll ask him to do a report and then present it to you. Um, at your next meeting, if that's okay. Uh, the new zoning officer, in case uh, you haven't been by the office, is a gentleman by the name of Charles Morrison. He was in um, Waterbury before this, um, zoning and property maintenance. So um, he's got. I thought he came from Waterbury. His position before this was Waterbury. 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 Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to finish up this meeting. Is this oh. Jones Hollow Associates going to be the next meeting? Or? Yeah, so that is the at the next meeting that, and there is one other application that just came in. D and D Market uh, installed some outdoor picnic tables. Obviously, outdoor seating requires your approval, so that will be on the agenda as well. Obviously, shouldn't take a lot of time. The regulation amendment may. The, last words. the regulation amendment should, uh, I think, will take a bit of time. So, uh, given the interest in that property down there, so just it's not just be a, a table. Be advised. D and D market either. It's, it's two tables. Two tables. And chairs. Anxiety down in that area. It's anxiety everywhere in this town, yeah, George. <laughs> two tables. Where do they have space for that? I haven't been by in a while. Anyways. I'll have to go to, by. I didn't notice them. I was yeah. trying not to hit some of the people. people backing out. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. So moved. Tom? Tom? I'll second. Thank you very much. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>